Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 Las Vegas. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for exclusive coverage of HP Enterprise, HPE, Discover 2016. This is our wrap up segment, SiliconANGLE Media is the Cube. Our flagship program, we go out to the events, extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, with my co-host Dave Vellante, and we have a special host analyst here from HPE, Jason Newton, Senior Director of Marketing at HPE. Uh, welcome hey in as a guest host. Our first I'm the last guy here, right? First on, time man. we've ever had a guest host. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome back. I feel honored. <laughs> uh, we chatted last year, so let's, let's summarize. Um, Dave, stock's up. It's on a 52-week high as of yesterday. Looking good. The train has left the station. The new station for CSC, Spin Merge, we had Chris Shu on, the Chief Operating Officer this morning, really laying out in great detail on that Spin Merge. Spin out, merge, new capital structure. Still the synergies of HP still in place, gives them some autonomy to do some M&A, some organic, a little debt, money coming in on a dividend, a little financial engineering, a little focus. Really a good deal, combined also with some great product announcements, the product leadership of Converge, kind of fruit on the tree, blossoming. Composable, great messaging. IOT, not bad, what do you think? Well, I mean, I've, as you know, John, been saying for many, many quarters now, years even, that HP's got to shrink to grow. That's exactly what happened with the split, which was great because they were able to restructure the balance sheet. And then, just recently, the spin merge created another tailwind. It was, a, I think, personally, a great financial move for the company, took down more debt, created cash and it's been formed at 1.5 billion. I mean, so the street loves that story. Why is that important? Because it, to me, it positions HP for the growth company that Meg said it, said it was supposed to be with the split. People were skeptical about that. That's exactly what yep. we have now, a focused company with a much stronger balance sheet in a position to do M&A with a product portfolio and an R&D pipeline that's starting to hit and driving new revenue opportunities and with a TAM expansion that we heard about this week into IOT with the GE and deal. And the TAM and is other. pretty significant because the analog data is significant, yep. but there's still one shoe left to drop. M&A activity and stuff coming out of the R&D well, pipeline. I think the, I think the, Thoughts on that? And we're seeing think, Chris kind of posturing, saying, look it, we're strong, we're going to get stronger, and Meg says publicly that they wouldn't do any mega acquisitions outside their core focus until they were stronger. They're looking pretty good right now. I so think again, Aruba is a good, good proof point, right? I mean, you go and back their to core the, business. Go back to the Hortonworks uh, uh, investment, the Hexalite, you know, investment, little tuck-in investments here or there. I think the other shoe that has to drop is software. We talk about this a lot. We had uh, Robert Young Johns on. He was frank. He said, "Hey, I had to clean up some stuff. <laughs> you know, we delevered some things. So that's the real." area of great opportunity for HPE, in my opinion. Jason, our yes. guest host, HP's perspective. Feeling stronger, what's the take? I mean, what's the analysis from your standpoint? Yeah, what, I mean, I think your... you guys are nailing it. I mean, everything is really coming into focus. Who we are as a company is becoming really clear to customers. It, you know, the, the, the story's resonating. Um, they understand the need to digitally transform. They understand that we're building these companies to be partners and, and part of that process. And then they see it all coming together here. You know, they see it in real life. They see all the technologies. Um, you mentioned IoT. I mean, that has been the hot thing this week. It's been trending everywhere on hashtag, all the hashtags, Twitter, the buzz on the floor, all the sessions, um, just so much opportunity. And you can see all of the different things that we bring to the table, right, to make that real for customers and the ecosystem of partners. It's really tremendous. Yeah, and the innovation strategy behind that, you know, is, is coming into focus. Again, sticking to the knitting of HP, they're staying on focus. Yeah. Okay, the cloud, again, not, not a lot of game changing shifting, but still on focus to be that integration hub. How is that coming together, Chase? I want to share, share some in color on pre-show preparation, messaging, and he's always going through the orchestration, kind of trying to get the maximum pop on, on the message and the story so it's clear and coherent, to now looking back at the, as the event winds down, what's your analysis of pre-messaging set up on given all the stuff that's been launched and, and discussed here to now as a show end, what's your summary? Well, I mean, I think our message has been really consistent. Um, you know, since maybe, you know, to the last two, three discovers that we've been together, uh, we came, I think it was almost a year ago uh, today, we came out and introduced um, the focus of the new Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and it was focused on four key areas of transformation. 
um, that 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 message has really resonated with the marketplace. We've gotten a lot of feedback. We've learned, and we've we I think further honed that this week. I mean, Meg was tremendous out there. Um, you know, who are we as a company? We're a digital transformation company, right? That's what we're all about. The four transformation areas that represents a model that we've rinsed and repeated. You know, pick the right mix within that and enable all kind. And you saw story after story, retail with Home Depot, manufacturing with Boeing, um, born in the cloud Dropbox, right? We're helping all of these customers continue to drive digital transformation. And she nailed it, right? I mean, she nailed that message consistently. And, and I think one of the interesting points that we really wanted to make to people is that, you know, why do you need a, why do you need a partner like a, a systems vendor, if you will, a, a technology innovator like a Hewlett Packard Enterprise for something like digital transformation? Um, you know, at the end of the day, you're not going to do this once. You're not just going to, hey, I, I did a digital transformation project and I'm done. You're going to do hundreds of these, dozens, you know, thousands over the next several years. Um, you're going to do it in your customer experience. You're going to do it in, you know, your new product development and you're creating new stuff. Your core operations. I mean, the the stuff that the, the FlowServe guys were talking about, it blew my mind. I mean, I'm like, there's trillions of dollars that are going to be spent on those types of industrial applications. And um, so you need to build a foundation. I think she used the line, um, uh, yes, I'm glad she used one of our lines, the uh, digital transformation factory, right? That's that, that industrialized foundation is what, what companies need to build. Because they can't just go, they can't, these can't be one-off projects. It's a great metaphor with the whole I, IoT meme. And she also said digital transformation is competitive necessity. Uh, the other thing that you've done, I think uh, props to you guys, is you took the speeds and feeds off the main stage. I mean, a little bit with a cutaway, hey, let's go to Manish for sure. a couple of, but you know, I have to say, three or four discoveries ago, too much speeds and feeds on the main stage. Now it was all about digital transformation, new opportunities, proof points, bringing in partners, bringing in customers, yeah. so. It's good. I mean, it's what customers, I mean, it, we, it's, it's about business outcomes. That's why we're all, that's why we're spending all the money on the technology. We don't do it for technology's sake. And John, what and, are, oh, go ahead, I mean, I mean, a lot of, you know, there, there's a lot of big problems that are, it, everyone now sees this tremendous opportunity to solve these problems that, you know, have been unsolvable for a long time and it's all coming together. So um, a huge amount of optimism and, and uh, you know, one of my jobs is to share that, you know, that exciting stuff that's happening and inspire others to say, hey, we can help you do amazing things too, right? And John, one of the other things you've been talking about a lot this week is the whole developer angle. With yeah. IoT and the extension into the industrial IoT, that becomes much more important, right? Yeah, I mean, Dave, this is, um, you know, I'm all over the DevOps, and we've been on DevOps and the big data since the beginning of this. Now, what HP is demonstrating is that as absolutely mainstream and a real disruptive enabler for this transformation acceleration. So we're in an acceleration phase now of people actually putting it into motion beyond POCs, but really into transformative architecture. So, you know, to me, the developer ecosystem is going to be an absolute growth opportunity because it's not just like the pure play developers. Oh, they're software developers, they program on this platform. It's the, mer it's the merging of the, of the vendors' platforms, multi-cloud, we call it inter-clouding, like inter-networking. So having an enabling platform like, like a Compose architecture allows for programmable infrastructure, which means that is the benefit of what the cloud is, elastic, pools of resources that are freely available. It's a developer dream, right? So if you're a developer and you're not an infrastructure geek, you want that. If you're an infrastructure geek, you want simplicity and you don't want to manage the hell out of it and get a beep or a text at the middle of the night when you're watching the Warriors game mm -hmm. to go in and go provision infrastructure. So that's one. Two, the ecosystem of the marketplace, the economic opportunity out there with developers is challenging. And I think what Chris Hsu pointed out that's kind of the hidden gem in all this is the, the, the funding of the ecosystem through the Pathfinder program and some of the, the, they're priming the pump with some of the funding. This is important because the consumer software market is softening and some say bursting. Yeah, there's some big unicorn winners, but for the general purpose, there's a, there's a ton of $10 million to $100 million business opportunities, white spaces out there available today. And that's not going to be a venture-backed company. That's going to be either some cash investment and or organic growth companies. And those companies need ecosystems. They yep. need to thrive in an, in an environment. They need scale. They need scale. Yeah. They need sales motions. They need, they need distribution. financial support. This is going to be a, a, a great opportunity for SAPs of the world, for HP, for Microsoft. And it's going to be interesting because it's not a winner-take-all. It's a win, it's because of the partnering model. So I think the enterprise developer is going to be huge. Well, yeah, you're pointing developer and, and back to messaging. It was no accident that 
drop boxes on stage. You know, a born in the cloud unicorn to some extent was on, on main stage. We had um, Docker, right? And the big announcement with Docker. Right. Um, we had a, you know, a 20 year old developer from Harvard, you know, telling his story. Uh, yeah, well, that was cool. Yeah, yeah, on, yeah. I mean, <laughs> this was probably the coolest, you know, main stage keynote presentation that we've ever done. And we, I mean, it's, we're a cool company and we wanted to show it. So one of the challenges you now have, cause you got all the, the, the split behind you, you know, yep. the spin, okay, great. You've got this June to, to December cadence now. You've got product coming out of that pipe with the, the, the Discovers. Sure. Now you've got to top this. So when do you start working on that? Have you started working on it already? Yeah, we've been <laughs> walking around talking about it. <laughs> this works, that didn't, this could be better. I mean, yeah, no, we, we all, yeah, yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. We started working on it yesterday, absolutely. We did our, our fair share of pumping cube gems out there. If you go to Twitter and search on the hashtag cube gems, you'll see all the, the great highlights. Of course, go to youtube.com slash siliconangle or siliconangle.tv. And I think what's really interesting too, I want to point out, Dave, you, you and I were talking about this last night, is that there's a cultural clear difference this year around Discover, HPE Discover, and that is it's the, I call it the unshackled HP. It felt like during the split time, pre-split and then during the split, it felt like, you know, like the, the employees wanted to bust out and just yeah. like, and, and take names and kick butt, right? So, totally but excited. now that's over, you are seeing now we're in our second year, it's a new company. It's like a, it feels like a small company. Well, you, you feel like a big company. I heard a story, I don't know if it's true, but you know, that Meg said yesterday, kind of after, she said to a friend of mine, it's like, you can, you can feel it, and this was important. You, you, you can yeah, feel it. you can it. feel it. So well, the accessibility. In the air, so, I mean, she's, yeah, people yeah. are working, and they're like, they're just moving faster. I've had, we've had multiple conversations around the cube, and like, hey, let's do this next year, that. Big, people are actually like really putting stuff together creatively. Uh, it doesn't feel like a big company. It's interesting, I think that might have a great cultural uh, opportunity for you guys. That's, um, is that, does that? Yeah, I mean, just again, the, the focus, the energy that Meg's brought back, um, you know, the exciting innovation, uh, the way that we've, I think, made labs much more integrated into our culture. It used to be labs was very isolated and separate, and I, I think under, uh, you know, Martin Fink's leadership and, and Meg's, that we've really brought that into the into the fold, and you're seeing that stuff, you know, fall into our products. You're seeing the composable infrastructure stuff, including some of the machine technology already. Um, you know, the, the you know, a lot of smart people okay. work at HPE, right? Final, and they like to do cool stuff. Final question for all of us here to wrap up the show, lightning round, hottest, coolest things of the show, top three or top one, Dave, we'll start with you. Well, to me, the whole ex TAM expansion, I called it, and the lever of Aruba, and of course, the great opportunity to bring that analog data, that's the most interesting thing that I take away from HPE Discover 2016, John, is HP's in a unique position from edge, everything in between to core, to handle that sort of challenge, that business challenge. A lot of people talk about, you know, uh, edge to cloud. When, when I heard a data point this week, the IDC said that 40% uh, that of the data um, is going to, uh, the, 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 the data is going to stay at the edge. That I number is much, much higher. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be 70, 80, 90% of that data is going to stay at the edge for so many reasons. And HP is in a very unique position to be able to handle that challenge from edge to core. So that to me is a, a trillion dollar opportunity. GE partnership is interesting. GE didn't really, in my opinion, want to partner with IBM. Didn't want to partner with the likes of Hitachi because it's you know, too competitive. HP was perceived by GE, this is my assessment, as a safe partner that can add value to the business that's complementary. So to me, that's <laughs> it's a dangerous combination. Jason, yeah, highlights I, for you on the show. Um, gosh, um, so many, but I, I think you're, you're kind of hitting on that IoT sweet spot. Um, I, I just want to call out the ecosystem that to your point is kind of glomming on and, and, and adding value around what we're doing. Um, certainly the GE stuff, the things that we're doing with the National, in National Instruments, mm -hmm. um, incredible demos out on the show floor with them. Um, Docker, really going to be key to extending what we believe, you know, infrastructure as code really ultimately should be. And, the synergies between that and, well, and synergy, you know, uh, is, is just really tremendous. So, you know, seeing those partners understanding, hey, we can all do this together. We can, we can be that digital transformation partner for our customers. I think that, if there's one thing, that, you know, that's where I'm, I'm really excited. And the light bulbs are coming on for customers saying, hey, I need to industrialize all this capability, this edge to core, that's exactly what I need. I need the analytics, I need the applications, I need the cultural change, I need the financial support to drive that transformation. 
this is a partner that can do that. Mm. Yeah, my big thing, my big thing is the composable is re, is the real deal. Um, that's grown out of a couple of years of investment in the converged infrastructure, now hyper-converged, all that stuff coming together. That's real meat on the bone right there that customers can use today. I think that's, and plus composable, is a word that can be used up and down the stack. That's not just for the plumbing of storage and other things. It could go all up to the apps. So that's my favorite, uh, one of my favorites. The IoT with Dr. Tom Bradich, what he talked about, the uh, edge line stuff is to me game changing. I was using the uh, analogy of the iPhone was a computer that had software to make phone calls. That was a game changer. It wasn't a phone that could do text messages and, and by the way, email. It was the complete reverse. And I think what HP, if they, this plays out, this could be a very similar dynamic in the sense that they're moving a data center to the edge of the network that happens to run an IoT device. So this is how, to me, the Steve the Jobs- The size of like, a shoebox. The size of a shoebox. So and you I, believe and that's a new product category? Think, you buy that? I buy, it, I buy that's a new product category. And I think, at the end of the day, it's all about making the data center smaller, right? And having all, all the apps run in wherever the hell that is. I mean, think about a telephone closet in a remote office. That could be now a full-on data center that used to be you know, 20,000 square feet in a, in a telephone closet. So that's the kind of thing I think that's game changing. The other thing that I liked that I think is going to be a real challenge for HP is the developer ecosystem. I think they have a great opportunity to win the enterprise developer, this new category, but with Haven and some of the big data stuff, they really got to move faster on that stuff. I think Robert Youngjohn's got a brilliant vision and I think he's got a great playbook. That's going to be something we're going to, I'm going to watch very closely. I but think industrial IoT is the hook there, right? I mean, well, the big that, data analytics, the, these apps. It, the right. apps. The composable, the apps, they got to move fast with the analytics into the developer ecosystem, not try to make it a pure play, um, uh, big data kind of thing. I think they got to integrate that in fast. So those are my, my main takeaways. And of course, the, I, I agree that the TS organization, keeping that in-house was smart. Oh yeah, I mean, no question. Make okay. call it Crown Jewels. Guys, thanks so much, uh, Jason. Thanks for coming on, appreciate it. Uh, Thank you. For your HP perspective. Dave, as always, great job. Thank you, Guys, man. great job here at the crew here and the folks back at the ranch, live blogging, Kristen Nicole and the whole live blogging team. Great work, we have a zillion blog posts. Go to crowdchat.net slash HPE Discover for the conversation. You can go to siliconangle.com, check out all the blog posts. Go to siliconangle.tv, all the videos, we did, I don't, can't even count, over 50 interviews on youtube.com slash siliconangle. And uh, of course, go to wikibon.com for some great research. And of course, go to Cube Gems on Twitter, natively inserted hashtag Cube Gems for all the highlights from these interviews. Great job, everybody, great job. That's a wrap here from HP Discover. This is theCUBE, thanks for watching. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, signing off from Las Vegas. Thanks for watching. Oh,